Hey guys, Drone Doc here. Today, we're gonna talk about how to get started in FPV. Just a few little tips to help you make the right choice for yourself. So what we wanna talk today about is uh, just getting started with the immersive experience that you guys are gonna have when you put on a pair of goggles. I get a lot of questions about how do I get into the FPV hobby and what to purchase? And one of the things I like to recommend to people is actually find a buddy or a friend who's in the hobby and try on a pair of goggles. It's really easy to get nauseous when you put on goggles for the first time if you're not used to it. So you definitely wanna make sure that that small immersive screen doesn't make you nauseous. And if that's the case and it doesn't make you nauseous, you may be ready to dip your feet into a simulator. So let's talk about the simulators. One of the best things you can direct your FPV effort in is practicing and developing your skills on a simulator. There are a few great simulators out there like the DRL Racing uh, Simulator, the Liftoff Simulator, and Velocidrone. Personally, one of my favorites is Velocidrone. The simulator environment and the flight characteristics directly translates to the real world and is a great platform for developing, practicing, and mastering your skill set. So you can see on screen here, this is the link to Velocidrone. Uh, it works for Mac and PC, and uh, you just go click on the download section, and then you can uh, fill out the registration, create an account, and and then download Velocidrone. Now let's talk about the simulator and the transmitter. A great simulator controller for any of the simulators mentioned is the Spectrum Interlink DX Simulator Controller. Here we have on screen the Interlink DX Simulator Controller. What's great about this controller is it's a USB plug and it plugs in directly to your computer. The downside to this is it only works as a simulator controller for your computer. So you, do, you can't actually use this when you go and fly a real FPV drone. Once you've developed your skills on the simulator, the second best thing you should invest in is a quality radio that will last the duration of your hobby. If you know you want to invest in a quality radio for the duration of your hobby, you can skip buying the simulator controller as the radios mentioned here will be a direct plug and play system into your computer with the proper cable. There are many transmitters on the market. Some are cheap, some are expensive, some use even long range modules in addition to the back of the radio. A personal favorite of mine is the RadioMaster TX16, which allows the addition of a long range module that plugs into the back of the radio. This is the radio I like to use. This is the RadioMaster TX16 Max Edition. And uh, what's great about this radio is the TBS Crossfire module plugs right in the back. This is the full size version of the module, and this is the micro version of the module. What's great about this TBS Crossfire module here, this full-size module, is it has power output up to two watts. But if you're looking to just fly in a park, then this is a great alternative. It's a little bit cheaper. It's around 70 bucks for the uh, micro version, and this supports up to 250 milliwatts. This TBS Crossfire module is one of the modules I prefer to use for my long range systems. It's simple, it's easy to use, and it has a user-friendly interface. But there are many long range modules you can choose from, like the R9 system from FR Sky or even the Express LRS uh, system, which is made by many different companies. And again, that stands for Express Long Range System. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna invest in a quality pair of goggles. This is gonna last the duration of your hobby. When you've decided you wanna start venturing into purchasing a drone, uh, be sure to determine whether you want to fly digital video or you wanna fly the old style analog video. Now there's some benefits and some downsides to both, um, I prefer the digital video just simply because of the 720p resolution that I get to my goggles. But analog is also a good choice if you're looking to be on a budget. They can range anywhere from $80 to $100 for a good analog pair of goggles. And then the digital goggles can range anywhere from five to 600 bucks. You can see here up on screen, we have the DJI FPV goggles. These are one of my personal favorites. And I think a lot of people in the industry actually like to use these. Um, these are the digital goggles from DJI and they range um, anywhere from five to 600 bucks depending on if you buy them new or if you buy them used. Here's an example of some analog goggles. These are made by Fat Shark. These are some of their newest goggles out. It's got the rapid fire module, which is really nice for analog video reception. But again, you know, top of the line anal analog goggles are a little bit more expensive than the digital goggles. So if you're not looking to purchase uh, good quality analog goggles, you might wanna go towards the cheaper budget side of things. Now it may get a little confusing when you hear the acronyms RTF, BNF, PNP, what does all that stuff mean? Well, we're gonna talk about a few acronyms to help you make the right choice when you go and purchase your drone. Now when you hear the word RTF, what does it stand for? That means ready to fly. 
and it comes with everything you need to get started, including the radio transmitter, a pair of goggles, and a battery. BNF stands for bind and fly, and it comes with everything you need except for the radio transmitter. You can use the radio transmitter of your choice and bind it to the receiver that comes installed on the drone. Bind and flies are typically preferred when purchasing an FPV drone because you can choose your own receiver to match the radio that you have. PNP stands for plug and play, and it comes with everything you need except for the transmitter, the receiver, the battery, and the charger. Typically, this is associated with the purchase of some foamy park planes. And when you hear the term ARF, that stands for almost ready to fly. These are generally DIY kits that come as foam pieces that you must glue together and build yourself. Typically, that's associated with foamy plane kits that you need to build. The two terms you will most often see in FPV drones is ready to fly and bind and fly. But if you're looking to build your own FPV drone, we have a course on Pilot Institute where we show you step-by-step -step instructions to assemble your drone from scratch. And the great news is the parts list in the course is free and we'll leave a link down in the video description and you guys can go and check that out. So after all that's said and done, you got your goggles, you got your transmitter, you've practiced on the simulator, it's time to invest in an FPV drone. Whether you're building it yourself or you wanna buy a ready to fly kit or even a bind and fly kit. For the main FPV websites that I usually prefer to order from is Pyrodrone, Race Day Quads, Progressive RC, and Get FPV. And the reason I order from them is because their shipping is super fast. Usually sourcing these parts uh, from these four websites in conjunction, you can usually find the parts that you're looking for. Let's go search for some great bind and fly FPV drones. So here's a great Cine Whoop. Um, this one's great because it has the digital video and you can fly this one kind of indoors. It's nice and light, not too quick. Uh, what's great about this receiver here is you can choose the XM Plus if you're not running the Crossfire system or you can actually choose a TBS Crossfire receiver. So it gives you those options and it's right around 370 bucks. Next one I wanna look at is a, a step up from that. This is a five inch drone and it has a digital system installed on it. You can see here it says Cadex Vista. So that's associated with the DJI digital system. And you have the option for four or six S. And four or six S just means that if you choose six S, the KV of the motors will be a lot lower so you can run a higher voltage. If you choose 4S, the KV of the motors will be a little bit higher and you'll have to run a lower voltage. Here's another great drone by iFlight. It's a bind and fly. Uh, it's called the Nazgul and it actually supports the DJI digital system. It's got the Cadex Vista Polar in it, which is that camera right up front. And uh, I've really noticed over the past years, iFlight has been making great products, especially when it comes to the five inch categories. Here you can actually choose your motors, just like we talked about before. 4S is set at 2750 kV and the 6S is set at 1800 kV. So you have the option to choose your battery size along with the motors that represent that battery. You can also choose your receiver type. You can choose FR Sky or you can choose the TBS Crossfire system and that will come with the receiver installed. So with that, I just wanna thank you guys for joining us here on the Drone Doc set. I look forward to bringing you more content in the future. And I hope that these tips and tricks have been helpful for you to make your decision into FPV. See you guys next week. Drone Doc out.